on the debate tonight. Fake news is king once again this election. Political parties and their cronies busy spreading fake news to misguide voters. Fake news 1. Rahul Gandhi apologizes for his Chaukidar comment. The fact is that Rahul Gandhi has only apologized for attributing his comment to the Supreme Court. Another fake news doing the rounds concerns controversial Malikao blast accused and BJP candidate Pragya Thakur. Pro right wing trolls are busy trying to spread the news that Pragya Thakur was acquitted. The fact is that Pragya Thakur is out on bail and the 2008 Malikao blast case trial is still underway. Another fake news story doing the rounds is that Wing Commander Abhinandan voted for the BJP. The fact is that the picture is of an Abhinandan look-alike which is being used by BJP fan pages. These are just some of the fake news stories being widely shared on social media in an attempt to build a narrative this election. As we get into the thick of the battle, how is fake news being used to push political agenda this election? Let's debate. Well, there, is a, there are entire factories being run by all political parties generating fake stories and fake news. They're editing videos, they're editing audio files and photographs and putting them out to make news seem like what it isn't. Fact check, fact check, fact check. And thankfully, we have enough fact checking agencies as well. In the country right now, uh, agencies like Boom, like Alt News and of course the Times of India who are fact checking and putting out information for us and we have representatives of this organization on the channel right now to help us understand or to sift through the news and to just bust some of the myths or some of the fake news that we've been looking at over the last couple of weeks. On the show with me, Govind Raj Atirad, senior journalist and founder of Boom, Pratik Sinha, co-founder of Alt News, Ritesh Bhatia is a cyber security expert, Vikram Bala is a fact-checking editor at the Times of India, T.R. Ramchandran, senior journalist and Bharat Kumar Rao is a political analyst. I welcome all of you to this conversation and thank you for joining us. Uh, Govind, good evening. I, I will start with you and uh, this one is actually uh, the one that I found most amusing. So we'll start on a lighter note uh, on story number four. For. Abhinandan uh, voted for the BJP. There's a photograph of someone who looks a lot like Wing Commander Abhinandan uh, wearing, uh, you know, a, a scarf with the BJP uh, lotus on it, claiming that he voted for the BJP or he campaigned for the BJP. That's not true, is it, <clears throat> Govind? Yeah, of course not. I mean, that was a but, but it was a very, very good imitation of the original and uh, no wonder it flew and no, no wonder it was pushed very hard uh, by those who obviously felt that it would serve their cause. Uh, Faye, I think you have to take a step back. I mean, mm. I, you mentioned earlier that or the, the theme of your discussion today is how is fake news being used to push the political agenda. Uh, I would say that this is something that's been now steadily picking up since almost a year ago. Uh, we started first noticing, I mean, we started, I'm not saying it didn't exist earlier, the active trends for using fake news or misinformation to push a political agenda or push a cause for a certain political party in May last year in the Karnataka elections. And since then, we've seen it only picking up. We've seen it picking up during elections. We've seen it up, seen it picking up and accelerating even when there are no elections, which is really when people have used misinformation to push a certain objective, mm. oftentimes communal. So what you're seeing today is something that has acquired velocity, acquired uh, 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 acceleration in for a whole year. And people have become smart at it, people have become adept at it, and people wait for situations, whether it's, uh, it's an event or a photograph in India, or even uh, an event happening outside the country, to, to use it to, prepare, uh, to push a certain narrative which obviously suits them, and which obviously, in some ways, they hope will help them uh, uh, get, get some sort of electoral attention. Well, let me, let me go to this, the next question. And just to point that point out on your screen, viewers, you're looking at that photograph that went viral saying Abhinandan Vartman or the wing commander voted for the BJP. That is a lookalike. That is not actually the wing commander in question. Uh, let me also bring in my colleague from the Times of India. Uh, we've had some very interesting information today, Vikram Bala. The fact that it's, it's the viral story says yes. Rahul Gandhi apologizes for calling the Prime Minister a chaukidar. He apologizes for the comment. In truth, in the response submitted to the Supreme Court, there was no apology for the comment. It was uh, The apology was for attributing it to the Supreme Court. So there's fake news there as well that we have to be aware of, right, Vikram? That's right, that's correct. Uh, 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 
so what is exactly happening is you know uh, uh, particular news comes and the fake news agencies or you I mean the the supporters of respective uh, political parties they try to give it a spin and before uh, uh, you know we try and do some damage control it is already uh, uh, the 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 fake news already goes viral on uh, different social media platforms and whether it's whatsapp facebook or twitter and what's also very uh, irritating is when even mm. after being pointing uh, even after pointing out that uh, what you've tweeted is fake uh, the 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 ones who have uh, uh, made that fake remark or uh, they don't delete their tweets or they don't delete their uh, facebook posts and they let it become viral and they issue an apology in some other tweet without delete, deleting their first tweet so uh, uh, it would be very uh, i mean through your program i would want to say that if these uh, uh, fake news peddlers if they if they have been told that what they have tweeted is fake if they delete it it would be of great help and these these are not some uh, random uh, uh, twitter users or facebook users these are the ones who are associated with the political parties be it bjp or the congress mm. they are they are they are they are there with it cells of the respective political parties uh, so they should uh, uh, introspect and they should delete those uh, uh, tweets which have been found to be fake which have been debunked by uh times of india or other fact checking agencies vikram also quick question obviously um, the entire aim here would be to win an election but do you find that a lot of times fake news also so, attempts to divide people on religion or caste absolutely uh, 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 see our politics is uh, unfortunately uh, uh, operating on a very polarized environment so uh, uh, or uh, division of, on the basis of caste or, poly, uh, or religion is uh, bound to happen yes uh, i mean they are bound to take uh, make news which is basically going to uh, suit a particular ideology so we just uh, uh, today we did a story uh, uh, this uh, uh, some journalists some I'm, i'm also very appalled that some senior journalists uh, worth their salt have been uh, quoting uh, leaders out of context and you know uh, presenting only half truths for example mm. one senior journalist uh, tweeted this uh, uh, thing that yogi adityanath made casteist remarks against uh, akhilesh yadav when in reality the entire when you watch the entire portion of his speech you realize that he was actually quoting attributing those remarks to mayawati who had made those remarks in 2014 yes when she was campaigning against akhilesh and mulayam Yes. So it's, and uh, uh, these were two se uh, senior journalists who tweeted about it. So I mean, uh, and these are the ones who normally blame uh, others for fa fake news, and these are the ones falling prey to it. Yes, in in fact, let me just also bring in Pratik Sinha, the co-founder of Alt News. Pratik, uh, one of the stories that you've put out is, of course, the fact that people are now circulating information saying Pragya Thakur, candidate of the BJP from the Bhopal constituency, has been acquitted of all terror charges. That's not true, is it? Yeah. Um, no, so she's not been. She's been the uh, the Makoka charge has been dropped, but she's still charged under UAPA. And uh, this narrative has been created for a very long time. In fact, there are several other things about uh, uh, Miss Thakur which need to be checked. A variety of her claims uh, vis-a-vis her. It's unfortunate. The problem is that you know uh, fact-checking bodies can do only so much, but. you know uh, uh, people like mirror now or times of india who you know who also have their fact vikram is on the show they can do much more because uh, there is a hindu report in which apparently uh, she uh, you know did not want to do the medical tests and things like that so so there's a, there's a lot of claims and counter claims about her and which deserve to be fact checked Right, and uh, we will go through more stories on fact checks, and our phone numbers are open. But I do want to involve the panel right right now into the dangers, the conversation of the dangers uh, in this election of fake news. Uh, Mr. Rawat, I will come to you first. Bharat Kumar Rawat is a political observer. Mr. Rawat, obviously, this is uh, with every passing election, it becomes louder and louder, and this is all in for all political parties. If we go through the entire list, we will see that every political party is doing this at this point. what is the risk at a crucial time like an election you of this right. sort of fake news yeah. yes what is the, that is right fake 
Yeah, you are absolutely right, Fave. Uh, uh, every year, year after year, month after month, we see uh, these things are going up and up and up, and that is very, uh, very that is defeating the basic purpose of democracy, democratic principles, and fair elections. Uh, half truth is worse than uh, the full untruth. It is said, and if you if you cut in a when cut paste job for about the truth then it is very, very dangerous because not, aam admi, generally they get carried away by what, what appears on Twitter or what on social media and even on television. So I think those who are putting up this type of stories should be more careful. If it is by mistake, I can understand. But now I see that it is by design. It is by design that these type of fake news are being created and carried. Uh, first, in uh, uh, a loan fashion, but later on mass basis, it happens, and that creates uh, a totally false picture yes. about the about the truth. And it does not happen only about the uh, politics; it happens in all areas. Particularly when elections come to uh, come, then these type of things are going up and up and up. Now we are, you have shown about uh, Rahul Gandhi's uh, statement, or about uh, uh, Naujo Singh Sidhu's. Uh, uh, slogan. I think they, you are absolutely lying about it. Not that the, it is by doing this cut paste job, you are changing the entire meaning, the context of the mm. situation, and then you are liable for punishment. I think. So. Yes, absolutely. People who do this are liable for punishment. Uh, Ritesh Bhatia is a cyber security expert. Ritesh, how often do the, does the police receive complaints about this sort of thing? Is it are they liable for punishment under the law right now? Is the police acting against people like this? Uh, Faye, I, I really don't have the statistics as to how many uh, complaints uh, people are getting and, uh, you know, unfortunately or fortunately the section 66A which was there that had got uh, been, uh, that had been scrapped as such. So as such, under the IT Act, there is no such uh, law in, you know, wherein you can go and complain that this is a fake news. But yes, if it's like, a, uh, if it's something that's very obscene, if it's something that's very, very like has cuss words and all that, then definitely actions can be taken. But I really haven't heard of uh, any such actions, uh, you know, with the common public or somebody else. Uh, you know, and uh, to answer your question about the dangers, we need to understand that when we are in the cyberspace, we are like kind of semi-hypnotized. So what happens, and that's the reason, and this is the advantage everybody takes. Like, like let's say you're on an e-commerce website. It's very easy to sell you multiple things, even if you have uh, decided to buy one. Same way, uh, you know, when you get a particular news in audio form, in video form, or in text form, even if it's uh, fake, uh, you tend to believe it. Well, that's interesting. Pratik Sinha, we have a question from one of our viewers. Gautam Varma says, how can ordinary citizens fight fake news? And I want to just bring in one more story that, that you pulled up, uh, you know, uh, Pratik, before that. At, but first, let's answer the question. How can ordinary citizens fight fake news at a time like this when it's so crucial? Unfortunately, there are not enough tools to uh, fight misinformation at this point. Of, I mean, uh, you know, the tools that we use are not even designed to fight misinformation. It's just that we are repurposing them to fight misinformation. At this point of time, the only thing that can be said to the ordinary citizens is, you know, cross-check your information, you know, visit sites like Alt mm -hmm. News, Boom Live, you know, uh, we are dedicated fact checkers and, uh, um, uh, you know, learn a ba some basic things like Google reverse image search. You know, it is very easy to learn, especially if you are from a privileged class where you have access to a laptop, you have a certain education, then it becomes your responsibility to go online and learn these techniques so that at least you can look at images, etc. See, you know, uh, whenever we do articles, we always put you know, our research in the article so that people can check, you know, check what we have done themselves and use those tools. So those are things. But other than that, uh, you know, we at Alt News, we are trying to bring out an app, uh, essentially, which will let you feed images and videos into it. And if it has already been fact-checked, we'll give you automated uh, responses. And uh, we are hoping to launch that very soon. And uh, these are the kind of things that social media companies or these, uh, you know, IT behemoths should have done. They, they have the resources, etc., to implement these things. But unfortunately, even though the technology, Pratik. underlying technology is pretty simple, uh, they have failed to implement these tools 
Yeah. Yes, you also put out a story about EVM uh, that only registers votes for the BJP I in think, the Lok uh, Sabha election. Can I add uh, yes, to that? Yes, go ahead, please, please. Yeah, no, Faye, I think, uh, I, I mean, I, I would add to that by saying that, you know, all of us have to raise the base level of sensory perception. And mm. let me let me explain. What I mean is that we cannot any longer believe everything that is thrown to us or consumed by us on a daily basis. Now, that's a very, very difficult task because at one level, I too, like Pratik, would say that, yes, you should go and use Google reverse image search. You should use an app, perhaps. You should use uh, other sites which help you track what is fake and not fake. But that doesn't work in on, on a, in a normal day for a normal person. I mean, you don't get up in the morning saying, okay, here is here are three pieces of news and I'm going to go and check two on this app or do a Google reverse image search or so, and, and so on. And that's just not practical. But what I can do is to be skeptical, be disbelieving, be careful about everything I consume, particularly off the internet and social platforms. There is no substitute for that. We yes. have to raise the base levels of awareness and sensory perception when it comes to engaging with the internet. And that's really the only medium to long term solution. Right. Uh, Pratik, I really want to quickly, and I know you have to leave at 8.30, the EVM that Can registers votes there? only for the BJP. I just want you to take us through that story before I bring in the rest of the panel. Uh, uh, I don't think, we are, I think that was a boom live story. I, I don't think all teams read that story. Uh, Okay. I, I think the, there was an old, I, I think the one that you're referring to, it was an old video, 2017 UP Civic Post. Okay, yeah, we did that, did do that story, but uh, basically there was, in 2017 during UP Civic Post, uh, mm. a video went viral claiming that uh, the EVM registers vote only for BJP. And at that point of time, it would have been true that, you know, uh, there was an EVM malfunction. We have heard of such EVM malfunctions. Uh, but, uh, but to pass it off in the context of 2019 elections was not right. And this is a common trend where, you know, old videos are circulated <coughs> as present. And this happens again and again. Half of our fact checking, we essentially look at, looking at old stuff being circulated as recent. And uh, the most recent would be this entire, uh, you know, Balakot, uh, you know, post Balakot misinformation, where uh, where you know uh, uh, certain parties found found it necessary to show the extent of devastation that Pakistan possibly mm. had, and multiple old uh, you know bodies of people from 2005-16 heat wave, you know, all those were passed around. So there's a constantly we are being bombarded by old images, old videos, and and they are passed off without a context of time and place. And, and that is uh, that is a big issue. And I, I just want to come back, uh, you know, uh, yes. about the sensory perception thing. Uh, uh, I kind of disagree with that comment because, you know, essentially then what we are saying <coughs> is that, you know, about anything and everything, we are essentially going into a world of, uh, you know, it, it, yes, we are in an information chaos, but I think the way forward is to solve this issue as opposed to go in a, I, I won't call it a denial mode, but uh, it is very difficult for, to expect people to not believe yes. in anything as yes. opposed to, uh, no, you know, but, I would uh, rather you know, on, on some level, Pratik, I agree that, with Govind uh, And when being he from says, a software engineering background, no. I know that tech... Yes, but you know, if we compare news today or what is being passed off as news today compared to say 20 years ago when the sources were limited but the sources were being held accountable. Here today you get stuff on WhatsApp and on Twitter where it's from multiple sources, look-alike sources. Even we've seen this pattern during elections where websites pop up that look exactly like the website of a news uh, of a newspaper and then disappear after the election so the sources per se right now are very dodgy which means that you have to actually be circumspect about everything you see i suppose that's the price that we have to pay for the convenience of smartphones. Circumspect is a different thing. Circumspect no, okay, and, yeah we have about, to be I mean, skeptical if I were to but, sum it up in but two words, the baseline can't yeah, be no, that one second pratik first and then govind can respond Yeah, no, we have to be skeptical, of, of course. We have to be skeptical about everything that we see. But at least, you know, I mean, talking to pe people on a day-to-day -day basis, that does not seem to be a solution, you know. Uh, people, I don't think people are skeptics uh, when it comes to, they have not been skeptics when it comes to this. And even to promote that culture, so you can promote two cultures, either the culture of skepticism, I, I think we need to do that. But we also need to held in account, you know, these companies like Facebook, etc. they have the technology. 
you know, I, I am a software engineer, I have worked on these things, and uh, we are always, we are building that kind of technology, and uh, uh, if they bring in that kind of technology, then it will definitely make the life of the citizens much yes. more simpler, where yes. fact checking, etc., will be simpler. I think we need to look at all avenues and yeah. not, uh, you know. Yes. In fact, Govind, with your permission, yes, that, I, I just I want to bring in Mr. T.R. Ramchandran, who hasn't spoken yet. Mr. Ramchandran, no. good evening. Um, I just, uh, you know, we have a question can, can from. Can I just quickly add? Uh, Pay, can I? Okay, all right, Govind, go ahead. Pay, can I add quickly? So I'll tell you what, most problems in the world are of demand or supply. I think it, to me it's very clear uh, that this is a problem that has to be fixed more on the demand side and not so much on the supply side because the, you will, I mean, to fix the supply side is actually simple to the extent that yes, you will crack down on the platforms, you will make them more accountable, but the creators of fake news will become smarter as they are becoming. I mean, if we've seen in the last year to 18 months in India that we've been tracking these things very closely, we can see how it's evolved, how it's it's morphed and, and, and uh, improvised and improved. So the longer term, like I said, the medium to longer term solution is that, or to fix the problem on the demand side, why do you take care of the supply side? I'm not, take, I'm not saying that don't uh, uh, <coughs> yes, correct it yes. or ignore the supply side. But finally, it's about us who are consumers. Remember, all of this is only 15 years old. We didn't have any platforms or internet in the way we are consuming it uh, just 15 years ago. Absolutely. Uh, I just want to go, go back to Mr. Uh, Ramchandran. Mr. T.R. Ramchandran is a senior journalist. Mr. Ramchandran, I think Govind and I, I think Govind and I can take that conversation offline. <laughs> I'm sure. Mr. Ramchandran, uh, we have now viewers asking us what can the EC do or what can the government do about something like this? It does it really come into the purview of the EC or at this point the government is sort of in suspended animation because everybody is in election mode? Is there any sort of authority that can take action against this sort of thing? Well, I think there needs to be an authority to take action because this is a very, very dangerous trend that one is seeing. It will not be out of place to mention here that in the United Kingdom, the House of Commons constituted a parliamentary inquiry to go into the entire gamut of fake news. I mean, I haven't been able to read the recommendations, what that committee had said. But we are witnessing a very dangerous trend in India. And if uh, measures are not taken to check it, we could have an absolute catastrophe in this country. I use the word catastrophe very carefully, that if you have this kind of false information being spread in the process of a seven-phase election, imagine the impact that it could have on the minds of the people going to cast their ballot. Yes. Which is their right, it is their right to go and cast their vote. But at the end of the day, the complications you are creating by the people who have, you know, been immersed in fake news can lead to a can completely disastrous situation for the country. Uh, I mean, it is not a minuscule population that is hearing these kind of phrases, not just on the internet, but also by politicians who are trying to propagate their point one way or the other. And it is not just misleading, but it is also peddling a lot of untruths. Is there any way of stopping it? The Google and Facebook have gone on record to say that they have put in place people to ensure cross-check, recheck, and then issue items so that they are not fake. But I don't think there's any guarantee in what they are saying. How will they know whether a news is fake in India, not knowing the political environment in this country? And in any case, I think what is happening right now, as many of your experts and computer software engineers have said, makes a lot of sense. But can we, can we have a mechanism to put it in check? There's no law existing in this country to take charge of a situation like this. You have one press council of India which is supposed to be an overarching body, but I think it is absolutely toothless when it comes to, uh, you know, deal with situations of this kind. Imagine if you have something doing the rounds on the eve of an election about a particular government having done extraordinarily well in several spheres of the economy and elsewhere. Otherwise, if you really go into the truth, it has been quite to the contrary. Imagine the impact that this will have. Anyway, I, it may be, uh, you know, I may be talking uh, in a situation that really is non-existent for now, 
but it doesn't like, take very long for such a situation to become to get a out fact. Of hand. Yes. And act, absolute, uh, you know, uh, untruth is being spread in this country. Is there a way to stop it if that is the case? And are you in a position to tell the people the factual situation on the ground and what the political, competing political parties are doing uh, for the betterment of the country and the people at large? Absolutely. In fact, I just want to uh, put out more stories. Uh, this one is, uh, again, courtesy Boom Live. Uh, there was a video of a little girl and the voiceover said that while the Prime Minister called her up on stage, uh, she actually mumbled, Chokidar chor hai. It turns out that that was a fake video. Boom Live has done that story. Govind, uh, you had to actually go through the voiceover and the recording to be able to tell whether it was her real voice or whether the voice had the, the audio had been morphed onto the video. How does Boom Life go? You know, figure out the uh, figure out a story like this. You know, the first thing is to. Uh, uh, I mean, I'd love to spar a little more with uh, uh, Pratik, but I mean, I think this is. But this is an important debate. I think how do you tackle these? issues where, you know, people are being creative, uh, exactly uh, to this example, and how do you, using technology, spot something like this? To my mind, uh, technology can go a long way, but it cannot go all the way. And I think surely, uh, at least at this point of time, even the best technology in the world, including using artificial intelligence, cannot spot this. So, to answer your question, we start with the assumption that there, it's very likely fake. Because, and, and that's the case with many such viral videos and photographs you see, because a lot of uh, misinformation originates and is, so, is, is best built around uh, videos and morphed images and doctored images and so on. So if you start with the presumption that it's likely fake or there's something wrong with it, because as I said, it's, this is something that's gone viral, and then you start looking for the original video, you start looking to see or you start hearing that thing more carefully, uh, you use uh, sort of better audio equipment to start hear and see if it sounds like it, the, it's the original tape or it's something that's been voice recorded, then you pretty much come to, a, uh, come to the answer and that's what's happened in this case as well. Uh, but like I said, I think the, the presumption is that uh, uh, the starting point is that there is something fishy because it's, on, it's viral and if, to, if you use your journalistic intuition, it will obviously tell you that what are the chances that a girl in a school will go and say something like this and therefore you go to the next step and say if it's not, then maybe there is another video or another tape which actually says what it should have said in the beginning. Absolutely. And you know, uh, another question that we must ask and I'll ask Mr. Rout, Mr. Rout, um, as a senior journalist also, let's not turn away from the fact that there are serious news sources that also make mistakes. And while some of it might be deliberate, some of it might not be, that again is a huge risk in an election like this. Yes, Afay, I understand that uh, there could be error of understanding, error of, error of interpretation and so on and so forth. But that should be uh, error and not a crime. Doing it intentionally and uh, sparing uh, false news is a crime and a serious crime because you are playing with the minds of the people and not to one or two. For newspaper, you have circulation of say few lakhs by, at best. But here, you go to the millions of people, and if you give this type of stories, like what, what is shown there in the, the little girl's uh, video, mm -hmm. I think you are committing a severe crime, very serious crime, and that hampers the basic tenets of democracy. I think there should be enactment. What is the problem is that for, for television, there are, there are enactments, there are laws. For newspaper, definitely there are defamation laws. But for the social media, which is a newer medium, there is no enough enactment to control the situation. If at all you can control, uh, that is post facto and that too far later than when it happens. Uh, here, everybody, every so social media activist, everybody who uses the media, uh, social media, is an editor also. There is no editor for this. Mm -hmm. Each person is an editor. So there should be self-discipline, self-constraint. If not, then the social media, the net netizens should come together and yes. act against these people because spreading this type of rumors is, is worse in a democracy. Mr. Ramchandran, are there more cases of errors right now in traditional media or are you seeing some crimes as well where people are misrepresenting or perhaps misinterpreting the news? for the audience?
Well, I think in the newspapers, by and large, the, mis the interpretation is definitely there. But if it is misrepresented, I think it stands out starkly. And I won't say corrections are made immediately, but efforts are made to, you know, make uh, what was uh, understood wrongly, try and make corrections in due course. But that is not the case, let's say, with the television media. The television media... Uh, what you say, the spoken word is spoken for a few minutes and that is the end of it. Whether it's right, wrong, indifferent or creates a problem uh, in a few days' time, again, remains to be seen. But what is happening in the current instance is that fake news is deliberately being manufactured and spread. And it is not the domain of any single political party, but everybody seems to be into it right now. And the kind of uh, comments that are being made about political parties on the internet, I think some of them, if you read, is absolutely, does not deserve to be on those platforms. And those platforms are earning money left, right and center, thanks to the advertisements. All this will come to end on May 23rd when the results come out. And by that time, Faye, I do believe a lot of damage would have been done. Absolutely. Uh, let, let me just uh, circle back to uh, our panel one more time. We have Pay. a couple of... Yes, go ahead. Pay. Yes, go with. No, Faye, I think, uh, you know, I, I mean, uh, I, I'm just trying to sort of uh, uh, understand in what tense that uh, we are having this discussion. Is it something, is, is it present continuous? Is it past? Is it future? You know, to my mind, the damage is, a lot of the damage is already done. If you're using the elections as, uh, a, a, as your uh, uh, sort of staging point to understand what was the impact being on fake news, I think the damage is done. I mean, if you look at the kind of spin and manufacturing that happened after Pulwama and Balakot, yes. it is mind boggling. I mean, we've reached, we have reached levels which perhaps we saw in the US presidential elections in 2016 and we know what happened after that. Now, I, I mean, this is something we will look back and we will say that this is how spin and manufactured news or manufactured content played a very critical role. Please, please remember that one of the most common for, uh, preludes to any forward that you get on WhatsApp is, hey, this is, read this because this is something that mainstream media is not going to tell you or this is something that mainstream media will never report. So, you know, there is, there is, constant, uh, uh, there is a constant barrage of very, very carefully designed uh, words and uh, phrases which, which will obviously over time convince you who to believe and who not mm. to believe. And like I said, this is, we, are pretty, we are coming very close in, 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 in structure to what happened in the U.S. presidential elections in 2016, except that in, the, in, in that case, it was all completely one-sided and here it's clearly many people in the fray. Absolutely. A couple of people on the phone line. Captain Jagpal on the phone line from Rotak. Captain Jagpal, go ahead. Suja. Yes, good evening. It is, it is excellent uh, to have this discussion. This is a time-tested, age-old practice, which is highly, uh, which is more uh, clearly on target than the missile. It is called Hitai. It is used in a manner, it is so deftly placed, that the opponent hasn't got the time to recover from the shock. By the time people contradict or come to know, the voting is over and the result is over. I give you an example. Let us say in Delhi election, somebody spreads a new rumor at night that Anna Hajare and Fay D'Souza are appealing that vote for Congress. <laughs> I have tested both of them. By the time both of you will come to know, and contradict, polling will be over. And a massive damage has been caused. That is what I feel. It is <laughs> age old, time tested, and it is very deftly placed. Nobody gets a time to recover. And it that's, is only that's, that that's actually, you're, you're absolutely right. Let me also, in a public service announcement, put out that I do not support any candidate or any political party, and I'm unlikely to do so uh, at all through this entire <laughs> process. I don't believe there are any journalists right now uh, on the channel, at least, who support any political party. Mangala on the phone line from Castle Road in Kerala. Mangala uh, is actually going to vote tomorrow morning. Mangala, I'm what sorry. is your point of view? Go ahead. Hello? Hello? Yes. Uh, see, I have been uh, allotted for the duty, but due to some uh, health problem, I got cancelled it. Okay, okay. So I got the class also, election class. 
Okay, uh, what is what is your uh, per, your uh, point of view on this topic, Mangla ji? You see, spreading fake news uh, makes a lot of problem during uh, 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 problem to, uh, to common people because now all these uh, uh, WhatsApp and all are available accessible for uh, the common man, man also. Yes. All right. Uh Thank you, Mangla, for calling us uh, on the phone line. Let me just get through a few more stories. Govind, there was a story about Chandra Babu Naidu having joined the YSRCP. This was a morphed photograph, and we've had a lot of instances of <laughs> morphed photographs. Uh, that's on your screen, the original, and uh, what people made it seem like. Now, in a place like Andhra Pradesh, uh, Mr. Naidu and the other person in the photograph, who uh, you know, who is uh, you know, who is his arch rival. Jagan, to put out a photograph like this would have upset a lot of people or would have actually caused a lot of people to vote the other way. Isn't that true? <laughs> I mean, I don't know whether, uh, you know, these, these things are difficult to say. I mean, did that or did all of this finally have a definitive impact on someone's uh, voting behavior? I mean, we all obviously believe that it, it likely does because when it, when it's, you know, when it's, it's a single one, it might not. But when it's done in a calculated, deliberate way over time and used, you know, as they say, in a weaponized way and, 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 and spread o over large geographic regions or areas, uh, over events like an election, usually it tends to have some sort of impact because you can ignore one, you can ignore two, but it's tough when it's, when it's uh, running into dozens or even hundreds. So uh, uh, using doctored photographs is, I think Pratik was saying this earlier as well, but one of the oldest tricks and it's also sad and uh, 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 in some way strange how people fall for it again and again. Uh, it goes back to something more conceptual that we, we believe what we like to believe and which is why our, our uh, you know, sort of uh, stable mind does not always uh, uh, be skeptical or be disbelieving as we should be. Uh, of, and, whether, and, and photographs and videos are, are the biggest and the, in some ways the easiest uh, weapons in the arsenal that fake news creators use. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I just want to bring in Ritesh Bhatia at this point. Ritesh, uh, you know, you've actually been looking at a lot of the, the fake accounts that are created on Facebook and on Twitter. And we've noticed, uh, yes, Mr. Rath, I'll come to you immediately after this. And we've noticed that it comes from across various political parties. Has this now become a job? Are people actually sitting there and forwarding fake news on fake accounts to spread it as far and wide as possible? Absolutely, Faye. In fact, like, you know, uh, there have been people who have been hired and they are actually getting very, very good remuneration also. They are getting like really lots of money to do all these things. And across all political parties, they are being hired. There are these like, you know, and especially now because it's a vacation time also for some of them. So they are, they are hiring some young students also who are going, uh, who are having their vacation. And these people are like, you know, uh, trying to disseminate a lot of information. Besides that, you are having a lot of Twitter bots. So there are bots also which are doing that. Then you are having like, you know, click farms and all that. Now these, there are like loads of mobile phones. Uh, and you know, you're just like kind of like retweeting or uh, sending messages. And, and it is just not that this infrastructure is in India. There is infrastructure which is there across the India also. And where you hire people over there also who do this particular job fee. Absolutely. Mr. Rauth, you wanted to come in? Go ahead. I, I want to t take the discussion slightly away from your uh, this present topic. See, okay. all of us are journalists and rela related to media somewhere or the other. I, I just want to take you away from the uh, internet and social media because I distinctly remember, I think in 96 or 97, when there was the election happening in Mumbai, uh, a news came in, in Bandra area, that something had gone wrong in Bahrampada area and bomb blasts uh, had happened. It was in the middle of the day when the uh, um, uh, voting was in full swing. Suddenly, because of this news, uh, the first it was a rumor, and then after that, so, some TV channels started flashing it as the breaking news. And the the voting booths they were they were, they were deserted as people got scared that there was a bomb blast. Uh, by the time by the time police came in and they explained and they cleared the whole thing that it was absolutely fake rumor 
there was nothing like that by the time the closing had come almost at the, to the end of the day. So these type of things are also played by design. Definitely some vested interest did not want that particular area to vote uh, in big number. Therefore, this happened. So I, I, this is a singular example I am giving you now. But there are many such examples which happening. They are as worse as the social media uh, rumor mongering. All right. Last question. Quick question. Vikram Bala, what is your advice for voters right now who haven't voted yet? How do they guard themselves against fake news? I, uh, Faye, I think, uh, you know, uh, as I taking further from what I said earlier, that we are sitting in a very polarized environment. I, ha I personally, I believe there are hardly any fence sitters right now. So we believe or tend to disbelieve what our prejudiced mind wants us to. And uh, uh, as far as, you know, being uh, uh, guarding, as far as guarding against fake news is concerned, I think, uh, uh, but what I have observed is personally that younger generation is by default very skeptical about things. They don't uh, tend to believe things very uh, easily and it is the slightly older generation as you can see also on our family WhatsApp groups who are mm. uh, culprit of uh, you know forwarding those uh, fake uh, messages whether they are politically motivated, whether they are anything, whether they have got anything to do with maligning a particular product that don't drink it, don't eat it because you're going to fall ill because of that. So I believe it is uh, uh, the older generation that has to uh, develop a bit, little bit of every uh, skepticism like the younger generation. And uh, 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 and that's pretty much what I, what I feel that it's. Govind, do you have advice other, uh, you know, other than keeping ourselves aware of what we're reading? Is there anything else that voters ought to be doing at this point? I mean, there is nothing, uh, we have to be more self-aware. Uh, there is no two ways about that. I mean, uh, if, if, you were a, if you were a more careful voter, yes, you would perhaps look at the, uh, the track record of the people uh, you are likely to vote for or your candidate. There's a lot of data available, including from many media, mainstream media organizations uh, like the Times of India uh, or and the India Today, the Hindustan Times, Indian Express. I mean, they're all putting together uh, very good uh, packages uh, which have hard data on your candidates, look at that, form an opinion. Uh, in obviously, in most cases, you would have formed an opinion basis, uh, the leader or the political leader of that party and whether you want to go in that direction or not. But apart from that, I think you just have to be self-aware. I mean, I, maybe, I, I mean, I'm a little extreme. I think that you should disbelieve everything to start with and then uh, start using your filters. But there is no substitute for that, particularly in this time of extremely polarized, uh, uh, in, in an extremely polarized political environment, which is not going to go away earlier. I, we somehow assume that on May 23rd, uh, you know, a switch will go off and then everything will slow down. I don't think so. I think it's going to continue for a, for a while to come. Mm -hmm. And the only solution when we, will be when we start fixing it really uh, in, in a very medium and a long term way by focusing on the demand side. All right. Uh I want to thank my panelists for being so generous with their time this evening and having this conversation with us. And in conclusion, it's just simply a warning because everything you read, especially the things that get forwarded to you on WhatsApp, is something you should be careful about. Don't believe anything you read. It takes five minutes to run a quick Google search and figure out whether the news has been covered by major news, uh, newspapers or news agencies. It takes five minutes to actually spend some time figuring out if it's fake or not. And also, I would recommend personally, guard yourself emotionally from the news. Don't allow one news story or another news story to make you feel either angry or afraid or upset. Because these are exactly the three emotions that these stories are meant to strike on. And the more angry or victimized or fearful that they make you, they'll attempt to change your decision through these emotions. So the best way really is to read the news unemotionally, to make your decision on how you're going to vote unemotionally. Make it based on facts. Make it based on data. Make it based on research that's available right now on who the best candidate is and who you should be voting for. And not on emotion on religious emotion, or caste-based emotion, or community-based emotion. We rely on the facts. Thanks for watching.